welcome back to Azing News with me, Vanessa. The Secret Network Group helps Myanmar police escape to India. A secret network of activists and volunteers helps drive hundreds of defective Burmese police officers away from the army's brutal crackdown on dissent and move to relative safety in a small state from northeast India. According to accounts from at least 10 people who are involved in the bulk network, their escape by car and motorcycle is often guided by volunteer lead groups on both sides of the border. Some police personnel says they flee Myanmar because they fear persecutions after refusing to obey the military junta's order to shoot protesters. Indian lawmaker Kavan Lalvena tells Reuters that more than 1,000 people fleeing violence in Myanmar have crossed into neighboring India's Mizoram state since late February. Meanwhile, a senior police official in Mizoram says that includes about 280 Myanmar police and more than 2,000 fire department personnel. The tools used by members of the network are social media messaging apps and mobile phone SIM cards from both countries. Thailand begins to develop a COVID-19 vaccine with human trials in its country. Thailand starts human trials to develop coronavirus vaccine and expects to deploy it next year, which health minister says they could give the country more freedom with its vaccine policy. Thailand's vaccination drive is targeting the inoculation of its adult population by the end of the year using 61 million doses of AstraZeneca's vaccine, which will be locally produced from June. The homegrown vaccine candidate is being developed by state drug maker, the government pharmaceutical organization with Mahidol University's Tropical Medicine Department and an American non-profit and uses an inactivated virus to trigger immunity. Health Minister Anuting Charnvirakul says the vaccine will give Thailand more options with less constraints and elevate Thailand's public health system. Mahidol University's dean says 460 volunteers will be accepted for the human trials, 210 of whom will be used in the first phase. Phase 2 is expected to begin in July, with results by year-end. Another homegrown vaccine is being developed by Chulalongkorn University and uses messenger RNA or mRNA technology. It is expected to start human trials soon. Thailand has recorded 27,876 coronavirus cases with 91 deaths. Philippines government received second batch of Sinovac vaccines donated by China. The second batch of Sinovac vaccines donated by China arrives in the Philippines amid the rapid surge of COVID-19 infections in the Southeast Asian country. Chinese ambassador to the Philippines Huang Xiliang hands over the vaccines to the Philippines. At the end of last month, the first batch of 600,000 doses of vaccines donated by the Chinese government arrived. Then the vaccination started in the Philippines. Philippine officials welcoming the arrivals of the Chinese vaccines expresses their appreciation to China's donation. This is another major m milestone for us, especially uh, since uh, the supply of uh, vaccine is uh, uh, very uh, limited and then we have to uh, inoculate uh, 1.7 uh, frontliners and uh, we have to meet our uh, target for uh, this year in order to uh, uh, attain uh, uh, herd immunity. Francisco Tiongson Duque III, Secretary of the country's Health Ministry, says the vaccines are important to project people in the country. We are uh, indeed uh, gratified by uh, China's uh, consistent uh, aid to the Philippines by way of these much-needed life-saving vaccines. And this is uh, almost one of one million now of uh, donated uh, vaccines. And it will go a long way in giving protection 
to our people in general and to our healthcare workers in particular. Vivienzo Dizon, Deputy Chief Implementer of the National Task Force Against COVID-19, says China's donation to the Philippines shows the solid friendship between the two countries. Well, first of all, we cannot uh, thank the Chinese government enough for this very, very generous donation of another 400,000 vaccines. And it's, it's really something that we will need, uh, especially now that cases are going up. And uh, these really show the relationship between the Philippines and China has really grown very, very strong. So we thank you. We thank the Chinese government profoundly for this uh, assistance to us. China delivered the first batch of donated Sinovac vaccines to the Philippines on February 28. The Philippines has approved the emergency use for Sinovac vaccines along with the vaccines made by Pfizer, AstraZeneca and Russia's Sputnik V vaccines. The government aims to inoculate up to 70 million Filipino this year to achieve herd immunity, starting with healthcare workers, the elderly and the poor communities. Health professionals and students back on the streets protest against military coup in Myanmar. Pro-democracy protesters returned to the streets in Myanmar a day after a nationwide strike that saw business shut and people stay at home in silent protest against the military coup in the Southeast Asian country. Healthcare staff marched on the streets in Mandalay at dawn carrying placards demanding for the release of Aung San Suu Kyi, the country's elected leader who has been in detention since the coup in February. Meanwhile, in Dawei University, students march along with lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender groups carrying the flag of Suu Kyi's National League for Democracy and a pride flag. At least 286 people had been killed by security forces have increasingly resorted to lethal force to quell unrest. South Korea and Russia pledged to cooperate in the peace of the Korean Peninsula. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and South Korean Foreign Minister Chung Eo Yong pledged to continue close cooperation for the peace process of the Korean Peninsula. We placed a special emphasis on the importance of efforts to maintain peaceful and stable situation in the Northeast Asia, including the Korean Peninsula. This means all related countries need to abandon arms race and escalation of military activists on any form. We recognize that the Russian government has consistently supported the process aimed at establishing complete denuclearization and lasting peace on the Korean Peninsula, which also includes improvement of the inter-Korean relations and emphasized that Russia to continue to play the constructive role. Chung also expresses deep concern over the North Korea launch of short-range ballistic missiles. I express deep concern over North Korea's launch of what appeared to be short-range ballistic missiles while our government is making various efforts to pursue over fulfillment of complete denuclearization on the Korean Peninsula. Japan's Coast Guard says the first missile was detected soon after 7 a.m. and flew about 420 kilometers, followed by a second 20 minutes later that flew about 430 kilometers, indicating the missiles were short-range weapons. Protesters gather in Tokyo asked to cancel Olympic Games in a pandemic situation. Japanese people gathered and marched in central Tokyo to call for the cancellation of the Olympic Games the first day of the Olympic torch relay, which set off from Fukushima. Dozens of protesters gathered in downtown Tokyo, holding placards calling on Japan to scrap the event after the torch relay finished for the day. Toshio Miyazaki, who organizes the anti-Olympics rally, says he worries about the spread of the virus due to the visiting athletes and officials.
京オリンピックについて、本当にやったほうがいいと、やることが非常に。Very few people in Japan think it's a good thing to hold the Olympics, or the Olympics will bring us more happiness. In such a situation, on July 21st, It is meaningless to hold the Olympics that no one supports. Therefore, we are here to strongly call for the cancellation of the Games on its first day of the torch relay. これでやめにしましょうということを強く、えー、皆さんにアピールをしてあの宣言解除されたとたんされても結局 After the state of emergency, the situation of COVID-19 infection still has not improved, and more than 80 percent of people are against the Games. In this situation, should we still hold the Olympics? I think it will go completely wrong if we don't raise our voice and question about the decision of holding the Olympics against people's will. That's why I'm here to participate in this rally. Japan has spent nearly $300 billion to revive the Fukushima region, but many locals are apprehensive about the games. As some areas remain off limits, worries about radiation linger, and many have settled elsewhere. The United States and Britain imposed sanctions for the Myanmar military committing genocide against Rohingya Muslims. And allies, including uh, members of ASEAN, to take. The United States and Britain imposed sanctions on conglomerates controlled by Myanmar's military following the general's February 1st coup and deadly crackdown. With Washington calling it a response to abhorrent violence and abuses, the United States Treasury Department says its sanctions target Myanmar Economic Holding Public Company Limited and Myanmar Economic Corporation Limited. Meanwhile, Britain imposes similar sanctions on Myanmar Economic Corporation Limited, citing the Myanmar military serious human rights violations against Rohingya Muslims. In addition, the United States Senate Foreign Relations Committee held a virtual hearing on the coup. With senators questioning a State Department representative on the administration of United States President Joe Biden's policy towards Myanmar, the United States senator says the United States has begun a review of whether to declare the Myanmar military's campaign against the Rohingya minority a genocide, and should have an answer in the not too distant future. Uh, as I mentioned, the process has begun. I can't get into more details than, than that at this point, Mr. Chair. Uh, but the secretary is very committed. Uh, to the review uh, and to this process, uh, and uh, I think we will have an answer in the not distant future. Reuters reports that in the last day of the Trump administration, some United States officials are just outgoing Secretary of State Mike Pompeo formally declared that the Myanmar military's campaign against the Rohingya minority was a genocide, but Pompeo never made that call. China announces sanctions on United Kingdom entities and individuals who are spreading lies and disinformation. According to a statement by a Chinese foreign minister spokesperson that the United Kingdom imposes unilateral sanctions on relevant Chinese individuals and entities, citing the so-called human rights issues in Xinjiang. In statement says the move based on nothing but lies and disinformation flagrantly breaches international law and basic norms governing international relations, grossly interferes in China's internal affairs and severely undermines China and United Kingdom's relations. The Chinese Foreign Ministry has summoned British Ambassador to China to lodge solemn representations expressing firm opposition and strong condemnation. The Chinese side decides to sanction the following nine individuals and four entities on the United Kingdom side that maliciously spread lies and disinformation. China is firmly determined to safeguard its national sovereignty and security and development interest, and warns the United Kingdom side not to go further down the wrong path. Otherwise, China will resolutely make further reactions. Russia and South Korea meet to discuss bilateral relations after North Korea launched a missile. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov meets with his South Korean counterpart Jung Eun Yong in Seoul amid renewed tensions in the region after North Korea launched missiles. South Korea's Joint Chief of Staff reports at least two unidentified projectiles are fired into the sea between the Korean Peninsula and Japan from North Korea's east coast. Earlier, the Japanese government says one missile flew about 450 kilometers and landed outside the Japanese exclusive economic zone, indicating it was a short-range missile. Lavrov and Chung are expected to discuss bilateral relations and issues on the Korean Peninsula. After the meeting, the two are scheduled to hold a joint news conference.
to attend a ceremony marking the 30th anniversary of diplomatic ties between the two countries. Lavrov began a visit to China with a call for Moscow and Beijing to reduce their dependence on the dollar and Western payment systems and push back against what he calls the West ideological agenda. Cambodia uses traditional drums and gongs to warn residents about the coronavirus crisis in the country. Pagodas in Cambodia begin sounding their drums and gong five times a day as a warning to alert residents of the rising number of coronavirus cases in the country. We always use the drum or bell hitting as an alert for when we had any emergency crisis and now this is the good time because all the pagodas have this drum or bell to use as an alarm to fight against this virus. Prime Minister Hun Sen orders all pagodas to use this traditional method of alerting residents as a message to fight against COVID-19. The Southeast Asian nation of about 16 million has reported among the lowest number of coronavirus cases in the world. But earlier this month, it reported its first COVID-19 death, and since then, the death toll has risen to five. Over the same time frame, the total number of infections has also increased from around 1,100 to 1,817 cases. And that's for now. Please do not forget to continuously wash your hands, use your mask, and keep the social distancing rule. See you.